You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. At Fidelity, you'll always get a great value for your options trades. And with powerful investing tools that provide clear next steps, plus independent research and a wide range of investment types, we can help you make better trading decisions. Learn more about options trading with Fidelity at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. Good morning. Today is Thursday, November 8th, 2018. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. The first story today is from Investing.com. It's the top five things to know in the market on Thursday. First thing to know is there's a Fed policy statement. The Federal Reserve will announce its latest policy decision at 2 p.m. Eastern Time and the release and release its accompanying rate statement at the same time. No press conference is scheduled. While no change in policy is expected, investors will be looking for fresh signals from the U.S. Central Bank and its plans for the rest of the year and beyond. The Fed is likely to indicate that solid economic growth combined with rising inflation will keep it on track for a rate hike in December, despite mounting verbal pressure from the White House. The Fed raised borrowing costs in September for the third time this year. Fed fund futures currently price in an increase at the end of the year meeting at a probability of around 80%, according to Investing.com's Fed Rate Monitor tool. Besides the Fed, the economic calendar will be fairly light Thursday, with just weekly jobless claims reports on tap. Second thing to know today is U.S. futures point to a pullback. U.S. stock futures pointed to a lower open pre-open as investors took in the U.S. midterm election results and turned their focus to the Fed's monetary tightening path. Third thing to know today is we got Disney earnings. Dozens of companies are expected to release earnings today in one of the last big waves of the earnings season. Most of the focus will fall on Disney, which reports after the close. The media giant is expected to report adjusted earnings per share of $1.33 on revenue of $13.72 billion, according to estimates. Investors will be closely watching the results to see whether its growing efforts to take on Netflix in the streaming space are starting to pay off. Other high-profile names releasing quarterly results include D.R. Horton, Discovery, Cardinal Health, Crocs, and Plug Power, which are all set to report during pre-market hours. Those earnings are out. And joining Disney after the bell will be results from Yelp, Dropbox, Trade Desk, Activision Blizzard, Hertz, and AMC Entertainment. The fourth thing to note today is the U.S. dollar and U.S. bond yields edge higher. Away from equities, the dollar edged higher against the currency basket of bonds uh, against the currency basket, and bond yields rose as focus shifted away from politics to the Fed's monetary policy. The U.S. dollar index was up 0.3% to 96.09, pulling away from two and a half week lows hit in the previous session. In the bond market, U.S. Treasury prices edged lower, pushing yields higher across the curve, which uh, with the benchmark 10-year yield inching up 3.22%, 
while the two-year yield rose 2.95% to around levels not seen since 2008. Will a divided Congress, well, while a divided Congress will make it harder for President Donald Trump to push through new legislation, there's already talk of bipartisan cooperation on infrastructure spending, which would add more to the deficit, pushing yields even higher. Uh, the fifth thing to note today is China's exports smash exp expectations in October. China reported much stronger than expected exports for October, as shippers racing to beat higher tariff rates due to kick in at the start of the year rushed goods to the U.S. China's exports rose 15.6% last month from a year earlier, customs data showed, picking up from September's 14.5% and beating analyst forecasts for a modest slowdown to 11%. Import growth also defies forecasts for a slowdown, suggesting Beijing's growth-boosting measures to support the cooling economy may be slowly starting to make themselves felt. Imports for October quickened to 21.4% from 14.3% in September, beating analyst forecasts for a slight cooling to 14%. Our second story today is from cmegroup.com. CME Group announces launch of total return index futures on NASDAQ 100, Russell 1000, Russell 2000, and Dow Jones indexes. CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse derivatives marketplace today, announced it will introduce total return index futures based on the NASDAQ 100, Russell 1000, Russell 2000, and Dow Jones Industrial Average indexes on December 3rd, depending reg or pending regulatory review. These new products will adhere to a quarterly listing cycle and will trade alongside CME Group's existing S&P 500 Total Return Index Futures and Carry Adjusted Total Return Index Futures. We've expanded our suite of Total Return Index Futures in response to strong customer demand, and Tim McCourt, CME Group's Global Head of Equity Index Products and Alternative Investments. We're pleased to offer innovative products designed to help market participants find capital efficiencies and mitigate costs, especially those related to uncleared swap margin rules. Our final story today is from Investing.com. U.S. jobless claims fall in line with expectations last week. The number of people who filed for unemployment assistance in the U.S. fell broadly in line with market expectations last week, remaining in territory consistent with a strengthening labor market. The U.S. Department of Labor said the number of individuals filing for initial jobless benefits in the week ended November 3rd decreased by 1,000 to a seasonally adjusted 214,000 from the previous week's upwardly revised total of 215,000. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for today, Thursday, November 8th, 2018, your options news rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli, TradeSmart, and have a nice day. Thank you for listening to the Options News Rundown. To learn more about these stories or any other developments from the world of options, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for free options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by MarketTaker Mentoring, the leader in option trader education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's live Advantage Group Coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. 